So today, Kristen, I will show you how to make a pineapple green tea. In today's special episode, you're going to meet an owner here in Tampa, Florida, who's gonna show you behind the scenes of her bubble tea shop, Boba and Berry. We are going to do three ounces of syrup. This is two, and then this size is one. We're going to have a little tap of sugar, and then we're going to top it off with ice. As much ice as we can fit. Then, we're going to add seven ounces of hot jasmine green tea. That's exactly seven, and these will make the ice melt. We're going to put the cover in the other cover, and then the fun part comes. We're gonna put it straight into the shaker. Right. Now that it's been shaken, we are going to get a cup. We're going to add some strawberry boba, popping boba. There you go. And then we are going to put a refreshing drink. And there you go. There you go. Thank you so much for showing us behind the scenes of Boba and Berry. This of is like really exciting, and I of know course. everyone at home is going to be so excited to see everything that's happening behind the scenes, behind the counter. I'll show you. I'll awesome. show you. If you want to come around, uh, we'll show you back here so we can get more hands on with everything. We have the Boba Cooker. So, is this kind of the same size as the one that I had in my video? So honestly, I don't know what you had in your video, but I saw your video and I followed your instructions and I thought, well, one cup of boba for like six or eight cups of water. I'm like, I'm just getting the biggest cooker. <laughs> that's well. it. I don't even know. Like the biggest one I found, uh -huh. according to you, that's it. I actually sent you a message in YouTube asking you about the Instant Pot. I remember that. Okay, got yes. it. Yes. So I did try it once. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it was like I cooked it for three minutes, but they came a little bit overcooked. So it does work, but it's risky. So I still don't have the exact time. Otherwise, I would share with you and your audience. But so far, this works amazing. It does take time, though. Yeah. It does take time. So it's time investment in there. But it works. Yeah, exactly. And I think yes. that this is a very safe option as well. You know, if the staff come up and touch the outside, they're not gonna burn themselves. Once they're rinsing it out, obviously they have to use gloves. But the other thing that I've seen um, would be the induction cooker or electric stove cooker. Yes. But the problem with that is the pot gets really hot. So if a staff member comes up and bumps into it or touches it, they're really gonna burn their hands. Yes, I do so. consider that. But then also you need a specific pot for the induction. It's not, you cannot use like any pot. I decided to go this way. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. a, I think that's a good safe bet, the way you're going. Your videos, awesome. all because of your videos. <laughs> <laughs> and then where do you put your boba when you're done cooking it? So once it's cooked, we go to the sink, we drain it, just like exactly in your video, just like you said, and then we store it right here. This is the boba can. We leave a spoon in there and it will be in this container. Love your powders. You got the airtight containers. They're not coming off. No air is getting inside. I love it. Because of your videos as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
and these are super cute. Well, you know what? I was going to use some like this uh -huh. with a pump, mm -hmm. but as you guys can tell, I don't have a lot of space. So those would take a lot more space. So I had already from my previous business, these empty containers. So I decided to uh, use them to keep my syrup for the fruity teas. Cool, yeah. awesome. And then you just measure it into these? So yes, I do use the, the jigger mm -hmm. to measure the syrup and then put it into my shaker cup awesome. right over here. Now I see you have slush powder. Yeah. Please explain to everybody about slush powder and slushes and all of that because this is something that they generally forget to add to their drinks but it really makes a huge difference. You don't need that much, it's only like a teaspoon but it does give the drink a, a different consistency like a snow it's really hard to describe in words, but it gives you that perfect slush consistency. Otherwise, if you don't use this, I feel like you get like water on one side and then the fruit goes to the other, but you have to be very careful. If you use too much, you ruin the drink. It'll get slimy. So you just have to be very, very careful, but it's, it, it's worth it. And I see that you've got your mat here, your bar mat, which is amazing and so good for making drinks on. Yes. That way if you spill anything or drink space here, making it, it's right there. Super easy to clean as well. You've got your blenders, your shakers. You decided to put your teas a little higher? Yes, so when I came to the space, this, uh, this shelf was already here. So I decided, well, why move it? I'll just put the, the teas up here. And instead of having one of those, like in your videos where you had the hot water urn, mm -hmm. I decided to go with a water filtration this is system. Amazing. Yes, wow. so I always yes. have hot water going. Okay. Uh, and I, so I have my cold water for the slushes, I have my hot water for the teas. So mm -hmm. it's always ready to go. Wow, and it's yeah. filtered. It is filtered, is yes. This is definitely sort of a premium thing that you, that you don't see at a lot of bubble tea shops. Now something that you have which is amazing is this nice air conditioner. I'm sure you're Yes, staff about yes. That. Well, we are in Tampa and it definitely gets hot out here. I did install that AC and it's been very handy. So I wanted to show you the ice machine yes. that we talked earlier, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So it's amazing, this ice machine. It does work perfectly, but as you guys can tell, it's a little bit small. Oh, yeah, I see. I'm lucky enough to have space to put another ice machine. So probably get the same one and I'll put another one in here. This one looks very fancy. It's got like a little screen on here that you can see it. And you got your shaker machine. The shaker machine. Awesome. Good investment. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right here we have the blender for the slushes and then we have the ceiling machine. Now your blender for your slushes is different than your acai blender. Right? That is correct. Okay. So well, this is the uh, drink section only. Okay, so this whole section is drinks only. Yes. That's a really good idea. That That's correct. Back, going back and forth, back and forth. Correct. So like, this is just drinks, and then that side is just us I bowls. Correct. Yeah, and I like your sealer machine here as well. You got an auto sealer machine. That is correct. When you put the drink in it, it automatically does it, as opposed to manual, which is you have like a Las Vegas style pull bar. Right, no, this is the <laughs> automatic kind where you just put the drink, so if we press power, uh, I'm turning it on. We gotta wait for uh, the temperature to heat to heat to like around 184, and then once you put the drink, the machine will go inside and seal it right away. Yeah. Cool. It looks very sleek in design as well. Thank you. Like your whole layout. I like what you've done. Like you flowed it, and I feel like that's the thing that's really important for people when they're putting together a shop is to make sure there's some sort of flow with the drink making process. Correct. And you've got it down. You got your powders, your syrups. You're getting your water, your tea getting the ice, you're putting in the shaker or the blender, boom, and then you're sealing it. It's done. That's, That's correct. That's the way to go. Awesome. <sighs> All right, so now we're in the acai section. So if you want to tell us the flow of how this part works. Absolutely. So I have a freezer here where when someone orders the acai, we get, we get it out of the freezer. We make sure we cut it here. And then once the packs are cut, uh, we take them out and we blend them here. And that's a specific blender? This for... is just for the acai. Yeah. So once we blend the acai, we grab a bowl. So okay. now we flow the same way we came, now we go back and we prepare with the fresh fruit on top and then we get the spoon, the napkin, and then we serve. On the left hand side, we have the fresh fruit, fresh raspberries. When we are open for business, everything remains open. At the end of the night, everything gets sealed. And over here, I have the bobas and toppings, the jellies, and more bobas. So at night, you close 
the lids, you put the yes. tight lids on everything, and you close this. Correct. That way everything is for sure airtight sealed. It's everything sure is airtight sealed and it is refrigerated. That's amazing. Yes. So this is a really good option for people who don't want to have a display counter per se. Um, and they also don't want to be, you know, continuously taking the jugs of bubbles and jellies out of the fridge all the time. This is a really nice option for Correct. Them. Yeah, so we try to refill every night and keep it in the container and just it's sealed in the morning when the staff member comes in it's already ready to be served cool awesome yes and you've got your nice cutting board here built in that's a, yes this is a great unit and tell us about your fridge okay so the refrigerator is not that big but it's perfect for our needs the big containers of boba are once you open and jams are kept in here and my fresh my fresh produce on the top so fresh products goes on the top and then boba uh, boba and jam are in the bottom. That's really great. I'm really glad that you're showing us this layout because a lot of people have questions about what size fridge should I get? Should I get a big one? Should I get a small one? And you know, sometimes less is more if you can get everything into that space. Yes, yes. But sometimes you may need to buy an additional one. Now I personally had two. They were these exact ones except they were separate. So it was one and one as opposed uh -huh. to just being a long one. Right. But it was again the volume be the size. same size. So far it's working great. Um, sometimes I wish I had another refrigerator, but you know, as for right now, I think we need another ice maker first. Yeah. This is like the smallest thing I've ever seen. So why did you opt to go for something smaller rather than bigger? The space is pretty small, so I have limited space. And although it looks small, it's a very powerful tool. Okay. Yes. <laughs> this can print the orders. This prints the receipts. I mean, you literally can do anything you want just as if you were to have a big POS. Cool. Yeah. That's really amazing. I love yeah. it. And because this is like a very fresh vibe with the wood, you know, it's kind of like you don't need this huge cash register. You've just got this little thing and then you can just boop, 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 do the yeah. orders. Easy. And, but I do notice you have your cash drawer under here, but that probably doesn't get utilized very often. No, we don't really use cash anymore. Uh, maybe like one or two sales a day or maybe not even. There's some days that we don't use any cash, so we just happen to have it there in case we need a couple dollars. Yeah, got yeah. it. Now, do you have the system with your drinks where it prints out like a sticker and a sticker goes in every single cup or do you just have one printout and you go off of that? Yeah, so that's something that was a, a problem that I encountered when I was about to open, trying to organize how I was going to print the orders. So unfortunately, uh, the printer that I bought to put stickers on every cup was not compatible with this specific terminal. Although I do like the terminal, I decided to stick with it. This does print the orders. So each order, like I cannot separate by drinks. So one full order will be printed and then you pass it along to the staff member to prepare those drinks. Okay. So yes, it does print the orders. Yeah, that's the way we did it as well. And our system at the one shop was left to right, the other one it was right to left. But basically, it, whatever was first, second, third, it went that way and then it was left first. to right. Yes, so we start from left to right. So Perfect. the first order keeps going like that and then we just put the following okay. after. And let's segue over to your sink area. So okay. each state is completely different. Each country is completely different. But in Florida, it looks like you only need three and then you need the hand wash sink. Correct. So uh, in the US, or at least here in Florida, we need a triple sink. And for the people that are looking to open their first uh, food facility, you need a triple sink because the first one is to wash, the second one is to rinse, and the third one is to sanitize. So you need a triple sink bay, and then you're going to need your hand sink, specifically for you guys to wash your hands. Now they will also require in certain states, like here in Florida, a mop sink. We do have a mop sink. It's outside behind the building. It is a sink at a very low level where you can uh, dump the, the water after you mop. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Are there any extra special things that you need to know of for Florida if you have a bathroom on the premise? Yes, if you are a brick and mortar, you do need to have a, a bathroom and it should be a wheelchair accessible. Got it. Yes. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Also, probably you had to contact the city to find out in advance the size of the doors for wheelchair accessibility Correct. as well. Correct. Yeah, because that's something that comes up. But all of that can be obtained from, I'm guessing, especially in America, you go to your city council and you say, I yeah. want to open a you shop. You can find it online. You can look for it online. Awesome. And it tells you everything that you need to know, yes. all the requirements, all the legal stuff, the measurements, probably like like you said, the three sinks and the yep. hand wash sink and 
all of that sort of stuff. Hot water. They will require hot water. Definitely. Yes. That, we need that in, in England yes, as well. Yes, hot absolutely. <laughs> hot water, it's very important. Some people say, like, oh, I can get away with it. You definitely no, need hot water. You definitely do. Yeah. And I know from experience that anytime you have anything that's kind of milky or oily, it leaves a residue on like the shaker or the blender. And it's important to have the hot soapy water yes. to get that off. Because if you just use soap and cold water, it won't take it, it off. It does yeah. it, but not really good. Exactly. And so yeah, you definitely need the hot water. It really yeah. makes a difference. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today and thank you for showing us behind the scenes of Boba and Barry. Of course, you guys are welcome anytime. Please be sure to click that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment below, and we will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Adios.